this is where I'm at now. This is 36 inches. I love the way it came out. But uh, even though it's as wide as my bed, you can see it doesn't get very much length. So now I have a major decision to make. Do I leave it as it is or do I extend it a foot on each side? Now if I do that, I would be making the end look like, okay, boop, boop, back up a little. I'd pretty much be adding that to the end and it wouldn't look the same. Or I could add another corner like this and fill in the edges with uh, the dark purple. Anyway, that's the decision I have to make. What do you think of that? Didn't that turn out bright and pretty? I'm loving it. Okay, let's get on with the instructions and we're going to make this puppy. Well, got a lot of tails to finish. But this is what we're working on. Just a granny square. And then you come out and you make your granny square around it, starting from here on each side. And they join together. You start in the middle of that side and you make your next granny. You get there. So, like I said, I don't know where I want to go with this, but right now we're concerned with starting it. Um, to make this, I wanted to make sure I had plenty because I didn't know how big I was going to make it. I could make this big enough to fit in the middle of my mom's king size bed. That's how much <laughs> yarn I bought. Um, I have not yet used one full skein of each of the five colors of yarn. So if you got one, and that's not the, that's the uh, seven ounce super savers. Actually it's five ounces for the, for the uh, variegated and uh, seven for the other three. Uh, still have some left. There's my box. I don't have a whole lot of purple left because that's the major color. I got that much purple left of the seven ounces. And because uh, blue was the next one that didn't use up as much, I've got uh, probably less than half a roll of the blue. So you still, if you're getting the three and a half ounce uh, skeins, you'd still want to get more than one. But the blue variegated, that's it. It used most of the five ounce skein. Okay. And a uh, whole bunch of the pink variegated left. Way over half. Okay. So that's the colors. I used a size eye hook. guess that's about it. Let's go start, shall we? You're going to love this when it's done. There's so many different ways you could do this. You could, uh, you could do a whole bunch of different colors in here. Say going from dark to light or light to dark and just do one row of each. Do make sure that you end up with uh, even rows. Like this is, uh, I'm only using five colors, but there's two of each row. That gives me even. If you use one row of each color, make sure that you use an even number of colors, okay? Or either that or put uh, two rows of your last color around to give a distinction to your square. Anyway, here we go. Everyone has their own way they like to start their granny squares. Some people start it with a slip stitch. and chain three or four, whatever floats your boat. 
one, two, three, and then you come back into the very first stitch and you slip stitch. This gives you this little hole to work with. You chain two and you come down in here into the, into the hole in the middle of the three and you do doubles, three sets of doubles, four sets of doubles, uh, three, a set of three doubles. Chain three, one, two, three, yarn over, this is your double, you yarn over, you go down into the hole, you pull up a stitch, yarn over, pull it through two stitches, yarn over, pull it through three stitch, two stitches. So that's two and two that makes the double. Yarn over and two and two. Yarn over and two and two. Chain three and do it again. We need a total of four sets of three. And one, two, three, and when you slip stitch back in, if you go through here every time, you're going to have um, not as neat a connection every time. It's going to be more visible. So this is how I do connections. I take the stitch I would normally go into like this, and I go into the back of the loop, and I come into the top of the chain below it. So I'm still going through two stitches. But it's thinner and neater, and you don't end up with any kind of a uh, clog or a thicker area there. Okay? That's one way to start a granny square. Another way is to use the magic is to use a magic circle. A magic circle you have your free yarn behind your hand. You bring it forward over your top finger and you wrap it around two of your fingers. You take the feed thread, come down and hold on to it too. You come under your single thread here. See how I did that? Come up and grab this like that. And then you're going to go back up here to your feed thread and pull it through that little loop you just made. Okay. And then you're going to chain two and you're going to come down in and start your little sets of three double crochets just like that. Yarn over, pull it through, pull through two, and two, two, and two, two, and two, and chain one, two, and three, and stop. Now, you take your tail here and you just pull so it's nice and tight. And again, you want to go through this front stitch here, plus, see the, see the chain here? See the chain under it? We're going to go through this stitch and through the top of that chain right there. And there we have it. And pull this as tight as you want. Now, because it's just a single one, I know it's probably supposed to be just as tight as can be. Um, I like to do double magic circles, which just means you go around your two fingers twice instead of once. And then I don't have to do this. I just cut it. But if I just do it a single time, I come right in here and I go back into the middle again for one more trip around. 
just like that. At least a half trip around. Oops, get out of there. Sneak right back down in there. Come back around. Now I feel better. I wouldn't worry about this for individual squares that I make, but this is going to be the center of a big blanket, and it might get a lot of tugs. Now, you don't have to worry about your center. It is taken care of, and you can go on and start to build on your square. You want to do, uh, on this one, I'm, going, I'm doing um, two layers of each color. So I've done the front. The front is facing me. I'm going to turn it around. Bring my yarn back in front of my hook. Okay. And I'm going to go down in the hole. Pull up a slip stitch. And one, two. And do your first set of three. So that's chain counts as one. That's two. That's three. Chain three. And come back and do the second set in there. Every corner is going to be just the same from here on out. No matter how big you make this puppy, your corners will always have the two sets and a chain of three in each corner. Now, no single crochet in between. You wrap and you go right to the next stitch. Whether it's a corner stitch or a side stitch. No chaining between clusters. There we go. One, two, three. Like so. Now here, I only came up with a chain two off of this edge. I should have come up with a chain three. I really don't have a good chain two I can go into. So this time only, and I'm going to remember that, chain three when I come up. I'll go through both of these. And do my slip stitch. Okay. Go ahead and clip this off. Bring it through. Tight little goodie. Now this is my back. This is my second one. This is my back. I don't want to get lost on which one's my front. And which one's my back. So I'm going to keep a little tail in here. Now, here's my next color. I'm going to make a slip stitch to add my next color. I'll make a slip stitch. Yarn over, down into my center hole here. Let me skip somebody. Now let me go down another hole. Okay. Pull through two, and through two, and we're off and running with our new color. No stitch between clusters. Come right into your corner, your next hole, and you do your next set of three. And in this case, it's the corner. 
and then chain three go back and do your corner all you have to do now is don't forget to turn your work to do the second side very important I'm going to turn the work to do your second side okay going pretty good here that shows the pink better doesn't it nice and bright it's a nice dark bright pink when you have too much light on it, it looks too pale okay as you can see I've got my squared granny fairly well started I did two rows of the variegated and then two rows of the pink I'm going to add on my next color which is my variegated blue start off with a slip stitch wrap my yarn go into a hole do a double oops I like doing this way it's just a matter of keeping my tension so I don't end up with a big gap in my first one there we go I'm using an eye hook for this and I'm using the um, Red Heart Super Savers and the variegated uh, you don't get as much yarn as you do on the solids so I always need to buy extra variegated for this uh, this time I bought two skeins of everything let's see if I can sneak it out to an extra section this time just regular granny square work I'm using three chains on each corner try to keep it kind of loose very hard for me to do I'm a very tight crocheter but I'm trying to remember keep it loose okay for all of those of you who have done um, granny squares when you're doing um, two rows like this you want to make sure that your second row will always be in the same spot every time you want your second row of this color on the same side you want the second row of this color on the same side so it's important that you know which side you're starting on and so I keep my tails I keep my tails on the back so that when I see these tails I know that I'm on the right side for coming back on my second row first row I should not see any tails it has a really nice effect when you go like that because you end up with these kind of bar going around it's real pretty um, it also makes it better uh, it makes it two-sided looking so you've already seen the way this is going to look at the end I haven't because this is me making it for the first time so just continue this way um, if you're not going to use two rows if you're going to use single rows of colors little, like a little strip band different colors like rainbows make sure you always end up with an um, even number of rows it seems to help I tried doing it with uh, like five colors with just one row each and it does not work if it's not even just I don't know why it just doesn't so make sure if you decide to do single 
or triple or whatever, you end up with an even number of rows from the inside out, okay? So I want to see you back. Uh, keep going like this with your colors until you get out to your fifth color or sixth color or whatever amount you're doing. Um, since I'm doing doubles, it doesn't matter. I could do anything. I could stop at the blue and, and start on the next color. So keep on going like that and I'll be back with you when we get to the outside and we're ready to put our triangles on. Okay? Now I moved ahead past the first level into the second level. I really needed to find out if what I thought I was going to be able to do would work. And it has admirably. Um, I also needed to point out something because I may forget it when I come to the next one or the next one may end up being my last one. I don't know. But when I get to the next level out, I will need to start over. See, see how this is the second level here. When you start on the first level, you've got a set of three. And you have a hole, and the hole is what you start your next level with. The first level of each color is odd. Like the third level here, that's one, two, three. The next level is four, you have one, two, three, four. You start the next color in the middle, and you have an odd number, one, two, three, four, five. When you go up, you start the next color in the top of that one. These you have one, two, three, four, five, six, see? It's the same deal all the way up. When you get to here, you need to have the hole over your threesome to locate where you're going to start your center. You can't do that if you have um, an odd number of these stitches. They have to be even. That way you have the same amount on this side as you do this side and you have a starting point. Now, that brings us to this outside edge here and this is what I wanted to check out first. The first layer of my last color has to be an odd number. So these two had to meet right here, but I would have room to put a second bunch, a separate bunch. Because you have an even amount here. You would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this side. And you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on this side. And you need nine. So where these two meet is where you can put your odd bunch. And that will give you your first layer of your next color. Then the next one after that will be even. And you'll have a center point from which to start your next triangle. Okay? That's a very important point. You have to have an odd number for your first level of color. And when you add these two together... Since they're both even-sided, they're both the same size, you have an even number total. So you have to have room on the end between the two of them to put your odd bunch. Okay? Now I'm going to, um, I have to go ahead and finish putting my light blue on here. And then I'm going to put my uh, two layers of purple on. And then I'll be able to show you how I did this because after that the colors won't be the same as far as um, coming out and having the purple start right here at the tip of my purple. I'll have more lines so probably enough for two. At any rate it'll definitely go on beyond the purple into the other colors again. This is the only one that where it comes out just exactly right. Now the way I did this is 
I skipped one stitch in between. One stitch. I did my whole bunch here. I skipped one stitch and did a bunch here. Skipped one stitch and did a bunch here. And so on and so forth. My connections were skip one, connect, skip one, connect, all the way down. And that gave me an even number on both sides. Then you have your chain three on your ends. So, and I did the slip stitch on the top. So with the chain three on the ends, you have, um, these are all even from here out. Plus, you add one, two, that's even. And then you have your third one. Now your third one, one extra on each corner is going to help you because you need an odd number. Because you have one in the middle that you're starting from. And if these were absolutely even, you'd be out of step on both ends. So that works out good for us. That's why you want um, three chain instead of two chain on each corner. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure about this color combination, but I think it's going to come out nice. I kind of like it. It's just that I'm so used to the other, the other one I did it had kind of a, a more muted look, kind of. Like this. See? Ta-da! Lighter, darker, 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 darker. Um, my daughter has, my youngest daughter has claimed this one. She wants it. So I decided to make me another one. And I just, excuse me, I decided to go colorful. And you see what I mean here by the next triangle, that the next set I do? They're going to come down and I'm going to be coming out with my next color. Which in this case, uh, well, the current one will be the variegated pink here with the lighter pink here. So it won't match up there exactly. But again, I'm going to need to put... I had all kinds of trouble with this one because of that. Trouble, 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 trouble. Um, you need to have... With these connect, make one place in the middle for your odd one. And that will work out. This one, uh, if I wanted to add another one to it, I would have trouble because I would have to start right here in the middle, right here in the middle of my stitch instead of in between like that. So that's quite a difference, isn't it? Quite a different look. At this point, I've completed my second layer. Here's my middle. I've done my second layer. Um, I wanted to make sure this was going to turn out right. It does have to seem to have a slight indent, but I think that'll work out as I put the next layer on the outside. I like it better this way. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I did here. I'm going to do it right up here and start the next layer. And the way you treat this ray, this layer here, the way I'm treating this now, is the same way you treat every outside layer of every square. Okay? So to start with, to start with, you need to um, go in to the top of your stitches. Now, when you do the back, the second layers of any color, you are facing the back of your project. I keep my some of my tags on the back of my project so I know when I'm working on the back or the front. If I put my tails in all the time, I hadn't I wouldn't have a clue without stopping and looking and I'd make mistakes and I'd end up having to rip it. I don't want to do that this time. So you, once you do that, you turn it back around so you're facing the front, no tail showing. And you're going to go into the back loop of your top stitch and do your slip stitches all the way around. And 
even though we usually meter on the mitter, miter, whatever, uh, add extra stitches on the corners, we don't do that this time. We go ahead, right ahead into the back of that chain stitch, just like that. Back of your chain stitches. And go right around the corners. Now remember, these corners here are going to be here when you do your next level. Okay? So you don't need to mid it because it's definitely going to be pulled on. It's going to be pulled out to normal. So even if it looks a little bit like it's, it might be thinking of uh, curling or bunching on you, um, it's not that much. And as soon as you put the next layer on, it'll that part will disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the uh, rest of my slip stitch on. And I'll come back and show you how we start this. Okay, I wanted to touch base so when you come back to your slip stitch, so you don't end up with one more or one less than you need. Here is my first slip stitch right here. This slip stitch goes with this line. This slip stitch right here goes with this line. This one goes with this line. This slip stitch here goes with this line. The one I'm on now goes with this line. So this line here is the only one that doesn't have one, and it will have it from this bridge. This bridge will give it to you. So I'm going to come over in here and do your little slip. Now, this stitch belongs to here. This one belongs to here. This one belongs to here. This one belongs here and here and here. Make sure that all your slip stitches on the top belong to a column underneath. You don't want to end up with too many or too little slip stitches. And look very carefully at it. You have to loosen a little bit before you tie it off. Make sure that you know that this tiny little dot in here is not a stitch. This is your stitch. This is your stitch. This is not. It's a little bridge in here. So let's cut it off. Bring it in good and tight. And again, look at it, look at it, look at it. This little bridge is not a stitch. This is a stitch. See here? This is a stitch. 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 This little bridge in here is not. Okay? Now. For our sides. Now this time I don't start a side with a um, double because this is what we're going to do. See up here you have your front edge and you have your slip stitch. When we're working on the front of it we're going to come into this front part of the slip stitch. That leaves your little ridge here. When we're working in back, we're going to work in that side, that same stitch from the back, which will leave this little ridge here. Okay? Now, the way I did it before with a slip stitch, I just slip stitched into the side and did it through both um, layers, and boy, I really wish I hadn't, because I didn't have as much to work with. This will leave you a ledge on both sides and you won't have <coughs> an ugly attachment in back. <clears throat> okay, so this is the center right here. We want to skip this stitch and we want to go into this, this stitch. Or if you're right-handed, you slip this stitch and go into this stitch. We're going to go one stitch over from the middle. 
So we're going to go right through this front part of your slip stitch. I'm going to chain one. This will give us a little hole here to put a next bunch of uh, um, crochet on. Skip this stitch, come back down to our center. Verify that you are on the center. And do your double. And you want to do your full um, set of three, chain three, and another full set of three, all in this one stitch. Just like a dot. Okay. Now, this is the stitch you were in right here. See it? This is the one next to it. This is the next one. We're going to do... See, now I need to come up. We're going to chain one because we're connecting and coming up to the next layer. And that chain one becomes our space for our next bump. Now we're going to chain three, one, well chain two I should say. You skip, here's the stitch, here's the next stitch, you want to come up to the next stitch. Go in through the front of that slip stitch and make a single crochet. This gives you the hole you're going to need for your next bunch or your next color. Now we turn it around. Okay. Now this equals our first double crochet of the bunch. So we're going to come down in here and do our next two. So we have three in our bunch plus our hole for the bunch of the next color. No chain in between. Come right up here and we're going to do two sets of three with the chain three in the middle. So three doubles, chain two, three, and another three doubles. Like that. Now we come down this little hole that we left with the chain one space. Whoops, wrap first, Chris. There we go. I'm going to bring my tail over here. One, two, three. Now this last part is up to you. You can skip one and just you can chain one here and slip stitch into this or if you want to have your tail up where it's easier to weave through the colors you skip one stitch make sure I'm stitch sticking the right one here one two and do a single crochet and that gives you your hole for your next color Actually, the only time you really need to slip stitch is over here on this side. We chained one and slip stitched into here so you can come up. And that's the only time you'll actually have to slip stitch into the edge. And that's finishing the first half of each color. You, you chain one, slip stitch, and then come up with your three. And then you do your single crochet turn it around and march back across the color. Okay? Now, come back to the front. See all my little tags and stuff? Come back to the front to start the next color. You may leave. Thank you very much. Okay, and again, we're going to slip stitch. So here's the, here's the one that we were on the last color of. Skip one, come to the next color. I'm going to slip stitch right into that. 
We're going to chain one, which will give us the space when we come back to do our bunch on our second layer. Yarn over and we do three doubles right in this single crochet hole that we left. And we work our way back up just like we did before. And there we go. One, two, three. This is how you do all your points. The most important thing you have to do from now on is make sure you only skip one. When I did this the first time, um, I skipped to everyone and I thought that's what I would be doing this time. I believe in the first part of this where I was doing the uh, I think the first row of variegated blue I mentioned that I would be skipping two using every third one and two actually works out better for me. Okay, and there's the stitch I was in, right here. I'll skip that one, and I go to the next one, and I'm going to chain one, because this is the first half, the first layer of the color, and I'm going to slip stitch into that stitch, the front of my slip stitch. And that leaves me a chain one space for my group. Then I'm going to chain one, two, skip a stitch, come down into the front of the next stitch and do a single crochet and that gives me the space for my next color okay and then again you just come back and you do your other two two in this set of three because your first chain three or chain two was the beginning of this and going up again and that's how you start every single color when you come around to here you do your last set you can either chain one and slip stitch here or you can do a single crochet here and tie it off okay so that's how you do your corners you can tell I'm on the back side. I got my tails all over the place. Okay. So, I'll see you when we get out to this layer. Here you can see I've reached the, uh, excuse me, my cat walking through. I've reached the uh, third level. So we have the original one. And the second one we added on. It looks like it's just kind of placed on there, doesn't it? And then we have this one. And we still have room for four rows on the end before it comes up level. Which means you could do um, these two rows again and then do these two and this around the outside of it. At this point with the eye hook and the worsted weight yarn, it's running uh, 28, 28 inches corner to corner so and it makes you know a nice little area rug for a hall or a bedroom center of a small uh, den or something like that it's very pretty now there's several directions you can go from here you can leave it just like this you can add four more rows of the purple here so that you really essentially have a purple rug with this design in the middle of it. You can go ahead and continue on with your colors out here so you're doing your your uh, you know your middle color and your next color, your next color, your next color and that would make this about uh, 36 inches square and there's another alternative. Instead of going out 
once you get to this point, instead of continuing out this way, you can start here. And you can work your first color, second color, and so on out from here. And you'd have uh, like an eight-pointed star almost. It wouldn't be even because um, you wouldn't have as many left over on this side as you'd have sticking out on this side. But you'd have another level to go out to. So there's several different things you can try. I'm going to go ahead and go with um, this. I'm going to bring it out. Now, you know, even at this point, after putting that one bright color on there, I could go ahead and just put, like, just the pink and then a couple rows of purple. And that would make this, what, about 30 inches square? I could do that. Or I could stop right now and just put the purple on it and then put one more row of purple on the outside. There's all different ways to go with this. It's just a, a lovely, lovely pattern to try. Really nice. It's got such an unusual look to it. And people, it's an eye catcher. I think people will really like it. And I like the way I did it from the pink colors out to the purple. It just, it makes these bling. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work um, this edge. Um, maybe I'll work it in the pink and then, hmm. That's a lot of ripping. I want to do it first in the purple with this, just the purple around it and let you see what that looks. And I'll take the purple out, put the pink on, put the purple on, let you see that. And then I'll go ahead and do it the way I'm planning on, which is keep carrying it out until I'm back to my purple again. Okay, I'll be back. Now here it is with just putting just the purple on the outside. And I've got the two, the two rows of purple here. And if you want to just leave it at this without an extra row on the outside, you want to slip stitch into both strands of that slip stitch row. You just slip stitch right into it. Just like that. It gives a nice final to it. On the other hand, if you want to put another row on the outside, then you finish this. This is your uh, back side. You do the same thing you do on all back sides. You come up, skip a stitch, come up, do a single, and then go back down and continue your row. On the other side, you come to this corner. We'll make a single right next to it. And then on the throw on the outside, you'll use this hole in between these two singles for your center bunch. It'll go right over your stitch, just like that. Okay? Works out great. So that's that one. I'm going to take this out and put the uh, pink on. And let you see how that looks. Okay? Now here's what it looks like if you just stopped at the first two middle colors and then did your border. And if I was going to do this, I think I would do another one or two lines on here to make this border even thicker and more finalized. Fascinating pattern. Okay. That's what it would look like that way. Not a bad way to end it. This is, uh, what did I say? Thirty-five inches. So this is thirty-five inches square right here. Okay. Now you notice what I did here? Because it's the same color as this, I went ahead and I went through the last tip uh, slip stitch on the corner. 
It gives it a continuity that you wouldn't otherwise get. Now, if when I go ahead and, and go through the other sizes here, you know, the other colors, these two here, I won't be doing that. It, hmm, I'm going to try it. I think I'll do it just to look at it, but I'll probably only go through one strand. I went through um, both strands of this to make sure the continuity was good and solid on both sides. See there? The back side of this is going to look pretty good too. See there? So this will definitely be a two-sided design. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it my way. I'll be back. Okay. This is where I've ended it. I put my, um, this color here, I didn't put it into this. I put it into the close bar between here and here. If it had been purple, I would have made sure it was attached to that purple. And I measured and remeasured this puppy. This came out to this was 30 inches. This came out to with the purple on about 32 inches. From here, from the center, all the way across the center to the very edge with this comes out to 38 inches. And I measured the first time I thought it was 36. But when I measured this I thought it was around 36. I says, wait a minute. Can't do that. So I spread it out, loosened it up, set it down, took my measuring thing and measured the shit out of it. Pardon my language, ladies. Measured it to death until I made sure I was right. So this is 38 inches square right now crossed across and uh, if you stopped back here it would be about 32 inches square I would really like to see somebody making this and see see what colors they come up with I just wanted something bright and different for my room instead of the um, the other one that my daughter's getting so uh, at this point <sighs> I'm going to tie in my tails, leave a couple bows in back so I know where the, which side the tails are supposed to be on, and I'm going to think about it because, uh, as I said in the introduction, I'm either going to have to, um, let's get this turned around here, I'm either going to have to go like this and add a small one single set of color in the middle and then either come out on the edges and make this which would be kind of odd or even odder make this in here like this um, like that or make this on the edge and then fill in the rest with purple. But still I'm going to have the straight sides that are 38 inches long and I would just be extending it on the end. And I think it would lose a lot of its magic that way. So I am considering maybe even just putting just putting purple on the ends. I may just do that. I may just uh, of course then I have another question. Do I want to bring the purple out granny square style? Or do I just want to do it this way? Straight. I might just, uh, I could do that, I guess. Just come out granny squares all along until I get it the length I want on both sides. I just love, you know, starting a project and doing something that you're creating yourself is so much fun, but it can be, be a real mind tickler, too. So, 
Uh, if I was good at Photoshop, I'd just take a picture of this thing and I'd mess around it with it photoshopping until I decide how I want it. That would be nice. But I'm not really good at that stuff. I'm lucky I can get these videos out for you. Okay. Um, let me know what you did. Let me know if you like it. Um, I get a lot of subscribers. I get almost no comments. And it surprises me how many subscribers I have because I think I've got a total of four comments on all the videos I've done. So if you guys could just let me know, I love it, I hate it, you're crazy, um, can't stand you, you're all right. I mean, say something. Please, <laughs> give me a shot here. I want to know what you like and what you don't like. Uh, I can't improve if I don't, if I don't, well, keeping my hands in sight is the biggest complaint I have so far. Uh, I know the sound gets a little wonky, but... I'm on a very major street, and when the traffic goes by, it does odd things with my audio. So I get some weird ripples and stuff in the background. So, happy crocheting, everybody. Be healthy, be happy, and I'll see you around. Bye.